Marcus D. Wiley is a premier entertainer whose class of comedy surpasses the status quo. The charismatic comedian's style of delivery is captivating, funny, and knowledgeable. He provides lots of laughter along with a guaranteed message on being a better you. The motto for his brand of comedy is laughter's good, but the message is better. A three-time college graduate with an associate's degree in fine arts theater, bachelor's degree in radio TV film, and a master's degree in communication. Marcus is also a published author. His book, Hustle and Faith, remains a top-selling piece of literature, and excerpts from the book are often quoted from the pulpits to the streets. Yolanda Adams refers to him as a comedic genius. Radio mogul Kathy Hughes has also called him a modern-day Dick Gregory. And Chase and Charlie only see him as dad. He's been married to Erica for over 25 years. Stand to your feet and put your hands together for Marcus D. Wiley. Thank you. Oh, yeah, come on. Sit down, sit down before I cry. Sit down before I cry. Sit down. Sit down before I cry. Thank you. What's up? What's up? I tell you what, it's cool when I do shows in D.C. and Atlanta, but ain't nothing like doing shows in H-Town, the home team. Yes, sir. What is up? Oh, it's good to see everybody. I know you're looking at me wondering about this hair. It's, uh, this pandemic hair. Uh, I don't go to the barber shop no more. Yeah, my barber, he, he good, but he smoke a lot of weed. And uh, I tell him, give me one thing, he do something else, so I just, I'm skipping it all. I'm looking like your children now. Yeah, that's how they look, you know, them kids, they don't do no hair. Yeah, but thank you so much. I, I, I got so much to talk about tonight, and so, I uh, appreciate everybody coming now, but let's jump into it. In 2020, in 2020, uh, my calendar for comedy was looking good in 2020. Uh, it was fantastic looking. I, I was already spending money I ain't got yet. Uh, just looking at all the bookings I had in 2020. Then all of a sudden, we get hit by this virus. Uh, it started off, it was called coronavirus. Then it went to COVID. Then it went to COVID-19. Then it went to Delta, Sigma, Theta, Iata, Alpha, I Omega, Kappa, Omicron, Monkeypox. I mean, so many different variants. Uh, at first, when, the, when it hit, I wasn't tripping. We was in a pandemic, I wasn't tripping because I had some money saved for a rainy day. Yeah, yeah, that's how my daddy taught me. I always have you some money saved for a rainy day. So I wasn't tripping when it first hit. I wasn't tripping at all. Now, now some of you, some of you, you were getting that, uh, what they call it, PPP money, you was getting the loans. You was getting the loans. And what you start doing with your money, start doing stuff you never did before, which was accessing uh, entertainers. So folk were calling me, you know, hey, Marcus, uh, we're doing something different this year, and I was wondering if you would perform virtually for my daughter's graduation. I said, y'all got me messed up, man. I don't know if you know, but I'm Marcus D. Wiley. Yeah, uh, my career's pretty good. Uh, I'm not performing for your little girl. Uh, yeah, call some other musty comedian. Uh, not me. Yeah, folk were calling me, I mean, just hitting me. Hey, man, my mama retiring. We want you to perform virtually, you know, for my mama's retirement party. I'm like, come on, y'all. I, I hate to throw out my credentials, but uh, if you didn't know, you know, uh, I was on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show, the first gospel syndicated show ever made. Uh, I'm not doing your mama's retirement party. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, at first, I mean, I was on it, I was on it. But I, I said all them no's, you know, in the beginning. But then around July. <laughs> around July. Around July. I realized I didn't have rainy year money. I got rainy day money. But I ain't got rainy year money. So I had to do what the Bible say, I had to humble myself. <laughs> Woo, and you don't even know if you can humble yourself until you have to. So all them shows I was turning down at first, now I'm taking them. 
I'm doing all type of graduation parties and retirement parties and anniversaries and divorce parties. Uh, I mean, folk were spending that money, man. I'm doing all these shows, but I don't like none of it. Right? I don't like it. I don't know how, I don't know what y'all think, but it's hard talking to a computer. Yeah, it's hard in my office at the house in front of my phone trying to do a show. And some of you were so lazy. I mean, listen, you don't even show up and you at home. Uh, folk got me on all these Zooms, all these virtuals, and everybody mic is muted, so I don't know I'm connecting with people unless I see them. But some of you so lazy, you got your avatar up. Won't even show up at the crib. <laughs> I'm not liking myself at this particular point. I'm not liking the direction it's going for me. And so I'm there and out the blue, man, a good friend of mine called. His name is Ali Sadiq, right here from H-Town, comedian. Yeah. Ali Sadiq calls me and say, hey, Mark, listen, we're in a pandemic and I know the churches are closed. Yeah, I'm a child. Yeah. He said, I know the churches are closed. He said, but these clubs, they wide open. Yeah. Yeah. The churches are, we're in the pandemic now. Our folk are nervous. They, they scared. They, they don't know what to do. And the place of refuge. Now, now, don't get mad at the church because it's not the church fault. That was a mandate. But I'm just sharing you, sharing with you that the clubs are open and the churches are closed. So Ali says, hey, I can't pay you like them churches. That's tough. Uh, but he caught me in a humble position right now. So he said, but I can put some money in your pocket, you know, to times get better. And if I be honest with y'all, I did not want to get back in the clubs. I've, I've done clubs before, but that's not my jam. You know, the churches treat you better, pay you better, hospitality on a whole nother level. So I didn't want to get back in these clubs. Yeah. Plus, the churches preach against darkness. And that's what the clubs is all about. Darkness. But there were some other nesses I was concerned about. Like homelessness, carlessness, moneyless. Okay, you understand what I'm saying. So what I did, I did what a good Christian would do. What my daddy always taught me, what the Bible said. I prayed about it. They pray about everything. So I went to the Lord in prayer and I said, God, I have an opportunity to make some money in the clubs. If it be thy will. Show me some sign. And before I could get up off my knees good, I heard a still, small voice that said, Who can we send? Who will go for us to these clubs? And I said, Lord, send me. I go. And so for about two and a half years, I have been performing in these clubs. If you see the club residue dripping, leaking up off me, it's because I've been in them. Now I'm looking at some of you, especially those of you with masks on, you, you got judgment in your eyes. Yeah, you got judgment in your eyes, but I want to let you know that I represented us well in the club. Yeah, I represented us well. That's why he sent me. That's why he ain't seen you. He know what you were going to do. <laughs> yeah, I represent us well in the club. Every night in comedy clubs across the country, folk were coming up to me. Man, you blessed me tonight. I was like, blessed you? They was like, you blessed me tonight, bro. Oh, you didn't, you didn't even cuss. You don't cuss? And I was like, I know how. Uh, yeah, I ain't going to lie. I know how. Yeah, I know how. Oh, uh, I got kids. And, and, 
And every now and then you got to tell it like it is. Oh, yeah, I got kids. Yeah, yeah. Every night they coming up to me. Man, you was funny, bro. I appreciate what you did. Let me buy you a drink. Do you drink? And I was, again, oh, God, dog. Ah. You know, because I'm a good Christian. And good Christians don't drink in public. There it is. Oh, no. I'm not going to be no stumbling block for nobody. Oh, no, I don't drink in public. No, no, uh-uh. That's not responsible. No. And if I just got to, I always tell them, hey, can you take that umbrella out the glass? Get that fruit up out of there. Stop advertising. Folk coming up to me every night in that club. Bro, you spoke so well up there. Are you a pastor? And I was telling him, no, I ain't, I ain't no pastor. I mean, my dad was one, and my grandfather and my great grandfather, they was pastors. But I broke the generational curse. <laughs> I told my son, you welcome. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about it. I broke every chain on that one. <laughs> I don't know why people think just because you may know a little word and, and you know you speak well that you're a pastor. Man, I, listen, it's reasons why I can't pastor. <laughs> no, it is. It's, it's reasons why. I can't pastor. Yeah, let me share them with you. First reason why I can't pastor, watch this, until they allow cussing <laughs> in here, I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> See, some of you like, that'll never happen. Well, I thought women would never preach. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> I thought women would never wear pants in church. Look at all y'all. Ain't nobody got a dress on in here. And until they allow cussing here, because some of y'all need to hear it directly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some Christians need to be cussed out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what y'all don't understand is your pastors, they cuss you out on Sundays sometimes, but they do it through scripture. <laughs> but because you don't read, you don't know you've been cussed out. <laughs> Over your head. Second reason why I can't pass is because too much walking takes place in church. Only in church are people so free. They just so, so, so free that they just get up whenever they get ready and walk. I would be cool with it if they did it in other places, but they don't. They only do it at church. That's why if I was the pastor, I would want to preach with a bowl of rocks right here. I dare you get up while I'm up here. <laughs> now go on, get up. Either you or these rocks gonna cry out. <laughs> go on, get up. Third reason why I can't pastor is because I can't keep your secrets. Do y'all know how many secrets pastors know about their congregation? And if you think I'm going to risk my good health <laughs> holding your sins, you got another thing coming. You tell me something in a counseling session on Wednesday, just know when I get up here Sunday, that's church business. Yeah, y'all talking about we're a family church. We about to see. And the last reason why I came pastor is because I like to go out too. Yeah, I said I like to go out too. And a lot of you, if you see your pastor out, that vex your spirit. Who passed over there? Ooh, oh, oh. 
Ooh, what he doing here? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but I don't think it's fair that you, the congregation, get to go out and live your life any kind of way. And I, the pastor, got to be at home fasting. I got to be at home praying, trying to get a word together for your raggedy life. That's why if I was your pastor, you'd be downtown kicking it. You would look up, pastor, praise the Lord, everybody. I'll see you in the morning. I already studied. Don't worry about it. But we're in this pandemic. I'm performing on the weekends in these clubs. However, I'm looking on this thing called social media. And I'm seeing people on social media who look like they winning in the pandemic. I feel like I'm losing. But I see people that's winning. Let me make it more personal. I see other comedians, and this is going to sound bad, I'm sorry, who I know ain't good. But they killing it on social media. And I was looking at it like, man, why am I not real active on social media? And I found out during the pandemic why I'm not. First of all, I'm not all active like that because social media came out after I was grown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should have learned something about seven. Listen. It came out after I was grown. Do y'all know, only thing I wanted to be in life was grown. <laughs> oh, 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 you ain't get it. Listen, this is all I ever wanted to be. Other people have big dreams. No, no, no. I want to be grown because my mama made grown sound like the thing to be. I asked her, Mama, why do I have to eat my food at the table? But you get to take your food and eat it in your room. My mama got two words. I'm grown. And I used to be like, oh, I can't wait. God can't wait to get grown. Oh, I can't wait. When I graduated from high school and went to college, the guidance counselor asked me, what do you want to major in? I said, grown. Where's that at? Because that's what I want to be. I want to be grown. And when I got to college, college gave me a false sense of being grown. It gave me a little ski taste <laughs> of being grown. Man, when I got to the Texas Southern University, yeah, when I got to TSU, when I tell y'all that was a party, Every night. Listen, somebody was throwing some, some frat party, some sorority party, some gathering, some kickback, some get together every night. And because I was feeling grown, I made it my business to be at every event. I didn't leave the dormitory till midnight. Yeah, I know some of you, don't judge me. It was riotous living at this time. That's Bible. You gotta, gotta read it to catch some of this. Uh, I would leave the dorm 12 o'clock. Get back to the dorm by four in the morning. School, I got class at eight. I might go. I'm grown. They don't call parents when you're in college. Yeah, I'm doing me. But then the summer came. And I had to move back with Pharaoh now. <laughs> Pharaoh them still operating on high school rules. Man, 
And I remember in the summertime, I had a little late over. We was eating at my mama's house. My mama looked at her watch and said, oh, Marcus, it's getting late. You might want to take her home and come on back. That's a lot of gas. I don't. <laughs> yeah, my gas ain't even set up like that. Oh, uh, but I tell, I, I tell, I tell mom. I said, now, my mama, I'm a, you know, I'ma stay, you know, cause at school, you know, what I'm saying I stay. Mom said, well, you're not in school. You here. So what you gonna do? You gonna take her home and you are gonna bring your black? And, now she cuss. I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know what how, how your first lady do it, but the first lady I grew up with, she said a few things. Uh, so anyway, I go take the girl home, go on walk her in, we sitting there, we talking, my mama started paging me, just do, 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 do. Do, 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 just, I'm like, oh, she blowing me up, ah. put 911 in there, it's no emergency. Just do, 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 do. So I cut the page off, Ugh. cut that thing out. Stayed the night at the girl house. When I tell you my mama must have slept at that front door. She didn't want to miss this moment. I get home the next morning, man, my mama just boom, punching me. See, this is when child abuse was legal. She just punching me. Wherever the, where, wherever the hands land, it's all good. It's a scope. Bam! Hit me in the face, everything. You think you grown, and then, and then, and blah, 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 just going off. Finally. The pastor show up. Where he been? Where he been? He come in there. Hey, 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 Brenda, get off the boy. Hey, come now. Hey. Mark, let me holler at you. He said, look, man, I feel you. Daddy was smooth. He said, I feel you, man. You, you, you growing up and you're smelling yourself. <laughs> but the way you go on about it, ain't nobody gonna have no peace here. <laughs> and I know what it feel like, you know, when you're smelling yourself. But listen, three people live here. Two people grown. <laughs> you not one of them. So what you're going to have to do is get out. Cool. I went and found somebody else that wanted to be grown like me. And we got us an apartment. My parents bought me a bedroom set. Good parents. Bought me a bedroom set. And then furnished my pantry with food. That food lasted for one month. After... After that one month, after that one month, when that food ran out, I started going to the grocery stores, and I had no idea. <laughs> Groceries <laughs> cost this much. <laughs> I'm used to a certain creature comfort at my mama house. I'm used to, you know, name brand stuff. <laughs> you know, bounty paper towels, <laughs> Charmin toilet tissue. Orville Redenbacher popcorn, Tabasco sauce. I mean, you know, just stuff I'm just used to seeing. Never knew the cost of it. So now I say, okay, what I got to do now, I wait for my mama to go to work and my daddy to go to church. And then I would go to the house and shop in their pantry. That lasted for about a month. And then one day I went over there, true story, with that same girl. We coming over there, yeah, they ain't here. I put that key in that door. <laughs> I'm blowing it like it's a cartridge. <laughs> I'm looking at the house, is this the house I grew up in? <laughs> I go to the neighbors. I called my mama, she at work. I could tell by the tone in her voice, she been waiting <laughs> for this call. 
I call my mama, mama, she yes. <laughs> Did y'all change the locks? Yes. <laughs> Why? She say, cause you a thief. <laughs> and it was either change the locks or call the laws. <laughs> now you want to be grown, go be grown. I tell everybody, that was the day I grew up. Social media came out when I felt like I was already who I wanted to be in life. Yeah, it did. Plus, I was turned off because somebody had posted me on social media, and I messed up by reading them comments. <laughs> Man, I'm reading them. Started off strong. <laughs> oh, he's, he's hilarious. Oh, this guy's brilliant. Oh, he's been to my church several times. We love him. I read all the way down about to the 20th comment. And some mean person <laughs> said, man, this dude corny than a blank blank. <laughs> I'm cool with being corny. It's the blank blank that got me, though. <laughs> oh, ho, ho! A blank, he made it personal. Whoever this is, they made it personal. And I'm from an Arab, you ain't got nothing good to say. So the fact he said something, mean they want that smoke. So I was asking people, hey, hey, find this, find this person. I'm trying to see who this is. Cause I ain't know how to use it. I ain't know about trolling and green light and gas light. I didn't know nothing about that. I just know somebody said something out of bounds. <laughs> so I'm looking at this social media. These boys, they winning. But what I'm noticing is a lot of these cats are hot, but they not done. They hot. Oh, you have liked something, shared it, tagged it. They went viral, and they hot, but they not done. Do you know how much hot food I've eaten? <laughs> that wasn't done. <laughs> I married young. I saw it. I saw it was hot. I saw the smoke coming up. I took a bite out of it. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> then I swallowed it. <laughs> Wasn't done. And you, the Christian folk, you should really feel what I'm saying. Because after you have sung your last song and prayed your last prayer, and you get to the pearly gates, I don't think you want to hear the Lord say, well, hot. <laughs> Do you? So I'm watching these hot boys and hot girls on social media, and I'm trying to find where do I fit? Because I've been grown so long, you know, the definition for me for grown is when you're not influenced by pop culture. But now we're in a culture of so many influencers. Matter of fact, that's what they call themselves. I'm an influencer. So I'm trying to see where do I fit in? Because you grown when you're not influenced. Okay, okay, let me make it better for you. I have an uncle, his name is Terry, Uncle Terry. My Uncle Terry, listen, in the 80s, my Uncle Terry was a pimp slash gangster. Pimp slash gangster, okay? Uncle Terry, silk shirts, okay? Uncle Terry got all type of herring bones around his, ropes around his neck. Uncle Terry got nugget rings on by seven of his ten fingers. Uncle Terry got a jerry curl. Listen to me. It's a California curl. That's where it look wet, but it's dry. Listen. Uncle Terry is a pimp slash gangster. 
That was in the 80s. If you run into my Uncle Terry tomorrow, Uncle Terry got a curl. Look wet, but it's dry. I don't even know who's still giving curls. <laughs> Uncle Terry still got ropes and nugget rings and Turkish links and herring bones. He came over to the house for Thanksgiving. I, I smelled him. I said, man, Uncle Terry, what you got on? That boy said, obsession. I said, I said, you still wear that? He said, they still sell it. It still smell good, it caught your attention. <laughs> so I'm trying to navigate my space in this world because I, I love the fact that Uncle Terry is like he is, but how do I be Uncle Terry without being Uncle Terry? <laughs> yeah. So I'm on this social media, I'm trying to find my way and my wife, she's telling me, babe, you gotta get on it. And my wife, you gotta get on it. Marcus, you got to get on it. She think we about to lose our house. You got to get on it. <laughs> you <laughs> you got to get on it. <laughs> she worrying me. I'm getting, are we about to lose out? I'm, you got to get on it. So I start doing this thing called Hell No Ministries. Hell No Ministries. I was doing this every Monday. I didn't want to do it, but started doing it. And I ain't going to even lie. My church started growing. Beware of these pastors y'all be following. <laughs> My numbers was growing on, on IG Live and Facebook Live. And from that, I get connected. Uh, this white comedian by the name of John Chris. White comedian John Chris. Very funny. Hilarious cat. He liked what I was doing. DMs me. Tells me to call him. I calls him. He basically say, hey, man. I enjoy your little hell no ministries. I went and watched some of your YouTube clips. <laughs> he said, you fun, and I would love for you to come with me on Mother's Day weekend. I got four shows in three days. I said, how much? <laughs> you know, I ain't going to lie. I, I be wanting that money. And he said, he put a number out there, and I was like, I'm there. <laughs> the first show was in some small rural area in Indiana. Listen to me. It is all white. <laughs> Nobody in there black but me. <laughs> no workers black. I'm the only black person there. And when I got up on that stage, I told them, folks, I said, hey, y'all do know this is a comedy show <laughs> and not an auction. Because it was like an all-white party. I was looking for Frankie Beverly. Where he at? Yeah. But John shared something with me that I needed to hear. Me connecting with him when he bought the show, it was about what he was getting ready to tell me. He said, hey, man, you do that hell no ministry, but you need to do it more. I said, John, I don't even want to do it. When I do it, <laughs> he said, You need to do it more because social media is like your girlfriend. And right now, you talk to your girlfriend once a week. <laughs> Other people talking to your girlfriend two, three times a day. Who do you think your girlfriend is going to eventually start listening to? I said, well, I hope my girlfriend's smart. <laughs> he said, she ain't. <laughs> John was telling me, you got to be consistent. But it's hard being consistent to something you don't want. Why do you think your diet ain't working? <laughs> you 
You don't want it. You don't want to eat this salad. <laughs> when that brisket smelling the way it's smelling. Why you think your workout ain't working out? It's hard to be consistent to something or even someone you don't want. I tell single people, especially women, stop praying. <laughs> I do. If he ain't consistent, he don't want you. Then John shares with me, you need to be engaging. Yeah, engaging. It's like engaging. So yeah, you don't have no engagement on your page. I was like, I'm very engaging. He said, well, show it on Instagram. I was like, man, I'm, I'm engaging. I've been engaging all my life. After this show, when I'm in that lobby, we're going to be kiki kicking, taking pictures. You're going to see I'm very engaging. But John was saying, put that on social media. And y'all, I ain't going to lie. I, it's hard for me, man, because I just come from an era where we had a thing called my business. <laughs> It got me messed up, man. I ain't lying. It's just my business. Uh, yeah, it's just it's, it's my business. And, and he like, man, you know, get into some challenges. Because, you know, on social media, they have all these challenges. Ice bucket challenge and mannequin challenge. <laughs> so gone. I mean, just all these challenges they have. And I was like, man, I'm challenged already. <laughs> Every month, I do a mortgage challenge. <laughs> Car no challenge, light bill, gas bill, water bill challenge, daycare challenge, grocery. I mean, I'm just challenged, man. Yeah. He tell me, he said, man, you got to be engaging, right? Start showing what you be doing. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I mean, I remember when New Edition, New Edition was on a tour, right, this uh, past year. They was on there uh, for the culture tour or something like that. And, and my wife, that's our, that's our favorite group. My wife's like, babe, they going to be in Houston this date. We check the calendar. I'm booked. She, oh. <laughs> we can't go nowhere. <laughs> so because I'm what they call a decent husband, <laughs> I went and looked at new edition schedule. Picked the date where I didn't have a show. Bought the tickets. I'm talking about up here tickets. <laughs> Flew us first class. Put us in the five star hotel. I'm just trying to tell you, I'm, I'm out here. Yeah, I'm trying to do something after the show. <laughs> trying to do something. Trying to be engaging. We're there, and this is a great show. I'm talking about everybody there. Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, Mike, Ralph, <laughs> and Johnny. It's, you know, it's rare all of them show up. And we just there, telephone da, 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 da. We just having a good time. I look up. My wife is recording the concert <laughs> for all these people who did not pay? That didn't sit well with me. Because I done spent all this money for you. I'm trying to have praise and worship with you. They tell you, be engaging. When George Floyd got murdered during the pandemic, my little followers was, was hitting me saying, Marcus, what do you have to say about this? What? We want to hear from you. Me? Yeah, let me tell you, so I, I, I ain't no activist. <laughs> and
And I'm as black as they come. I went to all black elementary, all black middle school, all black high school, went to a HBCU, worked for the two blackest companies in America, BET and Radio One. I'm blacked out. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me to shop black. I, that's all I know. But I ain't no activist. I don't know what's going on for we need to hear, so I never said nothing. I got a, I got a rental property in Third Ward. And I, I ran out to a rapper. This rapper, always on the ground. He got the money to a zeal, yeah, yeah. We out here. <laughs> this rapper done put a stripper pole in my townhouse. My pastor prayed over this house. I won't say that first. <laughs> my pastor came over there, prayed, blessed the house, everything, and he done put a stripper pole in the middle of my townhouse. When George Floyd died, they had to march downtown. He down there on IG Live. This for you, Floyd. Gone but not forgotten. We with you. And he four months behind on rent. <laughs> now he got his knee on my neck. But y'all want me to talk on Insta. This is what y'all want to hear? There are so many gray areas with the social media. It's so many of them. I ain't got time to even go through them. But let me tell you what I, what I learned about these gray areas of social media. My wife watched this show called The Voice. She watch this show called The Voice. I don't watch it, but because we sleep in the same bed, I see what she see. <laughs> we watching The Voice, and I learned something. On The Voice, there are four judges with their backs turned to the talent. The reason why their backs are turned to the talent is because they don't want to be fooled by how pretty she is. They don't want to be swayed by how handsome he is. They don't want to be tricked by how well they dress or fooled by how their personality is. All they listening for is the voice. Can you sing? Do you have talent? And they don't even pay attention to you until they know you got talent. But with social media, our chairs are already turned around. We don't even know what's good no more. Because everything coming at you, you, just, you, you, you got so much, you follow everybody. <laughs> you follow everybody. You don't know what's good no more. Do you know there are some people on social media, rich and famous, and not even good. They rich and famous. Not even good. You know how I know? Because over the pandemic, it happened for me. Over the pandemic, I get a DM from a young lady. The DM reads, Hey, Marcus, big fan of your comedy. I was wondering if you can counsel me and my fiancé. I hit her back, hey. <laughs> Thanks for the support. <laughs> However, I'm not a counselor. And because I'm a Christian, I ended it with a good tag. Be blessed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I knew you were like that, yeah. She DMs me a second time. Hey, I listen to you on the radio. I really love how you talk about your relationship with your wife. And I think me and my fiance can benefit from your wisdom and your knowledge. I hit her back. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for listening. However, I'm not a counselor. 
stay encouraged. Come on, man. You... <laughs> Stop using the same things, man. You should be growing in God now. <laughs> she DMs me a third time. But when she DMs me this time, I knew it was nobody but the Lord by what she said. The lady says, I'll pay you. Now, who am I to stop the blessings of the Lord? I go tell my wife, babe, lady just DM me, want me to counsel her and her fiance. Here go my wife, you ain't no counselor. I said, get thee behind me, Satan. You gonna be the main one, want a purse, want some heels, want some hair. Want some lashes? And you telling me what I'm not? I'm all God say I am. I had to get her straight. Then I told her, come watch your man work. We on the Zoom with the couple. The lady come on, hey, Marcus, thank you so much for taking this, you know. <sighs> we just been going through, every time I think we getting close, seem like we far away. We've been engaged now for seven years. <laughs> I want to tell her so bad. I've been in church all my life. And if I got my numbers correct, I think the number seven is the year of completion. He's not gonna marry you. But I couldn't say that, cause she already cashed at me. I gotta get this money. I didn't wanna just, you know, I gotta give her some fluff now. I ain't wanna just end the Zoom, that's it. Uh, She goes on talking. True story, y'all. She starts crying. When she starts crying, this is when I realize I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. I got a blue check on Instagram, but I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. I look to my wife for support. She crying. I said, fix your face. I don't know what you crying for. Get it together. This lady paid us. Act professional. I don't know why when one woman cries like a chain reaction, women just start crying. I'm drowning right now in my first counseling session. And finally the lady says something I can clamp on to. She say, Marcus, I just want my relationship to look something like yours. <laughs> like mine, you want your relationship to look like mine? First of all, when I'm on that radio, I be lying. It's called a morning show, not the morning truth. <laughs> and then I told her, you want what year 25 look like. I bet you don't want five through seven. <laughs> you sure don't want nine through 11. <laughs> 15 through seven, something about them odd numbers. <laughs> and the first year of the pandemic, listen, I travel 
That's why I think me and my wife got a fantastic relationship. <laughs> no, I mean, I, no, I don't mean it for me. I mean it for her, too. Everybody always think I'm talking about her. No, for, I mean for me. You know, for her. She always be like, hey, don't you got somewhere to be? <laughs> you ain't got no show this weekend? I mean, yeah, she want me gone. <laughs> but watch this here. But when the country shut down, and I couldn't go nowhere, love her to death. But man, I was like, every morning I kept waking up, wow. <laughs> you still here. <laughs> you ain't got no apartment or nothing? You know, ain't got <laughs> yeah. But then I tell the lady, I tell the sister, I say, listen, man, this is what I had to learn. You know, if you ever get married, man, this, this is what I've learned, you know. I say, man, stop thinking something always wrong with your relationship. So what y'all argue? Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> People kill me. I always think of something wrong. Yeah, we ain't equally yo. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. It take, a, it take, matter of fact, let me give it to you better. People respect seasons in every other aspect of life except a relationship. When you ain't got it going on money-wise, you, ooh, I can't wait for my season. You ain't never saying you gonna stop or you gonna quit. But only in a relationship when it ain't your season. <laughs> I said, man, you better stop looking at all this advertisement. Yeah. It's a major downfall in relationships looking at other folk. Just because they coming up in here and this recording looking all together. <laughs> Taco Bell food look good advertised. I <laughs> dare you go eat it tonight. <laughs> Watch that stomach. Uh, uh. So I told her, I said, listen, man. I had to learn to say when I see stuff that I liked. Not that anything wrong with my relationship. It's just that my relationship is not on that level yet. Ain't nothing wrong with mine. Mine just not on that, rela on, 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 it's not on that level yet. I mean, I'm reminded when I worked on staff at this church, I had been married three years. My coworker was married 30 years. He come to work one day and he said, hey, Mark, I'm taking an extended lunch because I just bought my wife brand new Lexus. He said, I'm going to go pick her up, take her to get the car. We're going to go grab lunch and I'll be back. I said, well, go ahead, pimp. <laughs> <laughs> said, Do your thing. When he got back, I was so excited. I was like, ah, oh, how did it go? He said, man, she loved the car. Just all on me in the dealership, hugging me, <laughs> kissing me. He telling me the story. Why he telling me the phone ring? That's all I hear. I wrecked the car. <laughs> he said, what? I wrecked the car, baby. I'm so sorry. He said, hey, hey, calm down, calm down. Are you all right? I don't know what happened. I didn't see the other car. He said, hey, hey, calm down. Are you all right? I don't know if the car told him, baby. I'm so sorry. He said, hey. <laughs> I don't care nothing about that car. Are you all right? I said, My relationship is not on that level yet. Because had I bought my wife a car, three years of marriage, and she wrecked it the day I bought it, I wouldn't be asking her, is she all right? I know she all right, she called. I 
I've been saying, put the car on the phone. Let me talk to the Lexus. Is you all right? A lot of people, relationships did not survive the pandemic. A lot of folk. There was a divorce epidemic <laughs> at my barber shop. <laughs> Everybody in now, when we returned, it was like, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> and those folk now look to me like I am, you know, the ambassador of this. Something I don't want to be. And I, I don't want to be, I, don't put me in, because anytime you think you got it together, you know, all them people y'all follow, relationship goals, and you like they couple, ooh, this is my couple, my favorite couple. <laughs> and as soon as they write a book, <laughs> out of there. But watch this. But they still ask me. So they come to me and they say, Marcus, brother, how you doing it? How, 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 you, how you maintaining? And I was like, man, you know, the old me would give just a fluff answer. Because I've been in church all my life, so I, I know what to say. <laughs> brother, much prayer. And don't get me wrong, you should pray. I'm telling like, I'm saying you shouldn't, but you know, it's the standard as prayer and communication, you know, all that type of stuff. But now I finally got something that I can start telling people. Man, I have learned how to forgive. If you're going to be in a relationship, man, you got to learn how to forgive. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Okay. And it's strange how folk who need forgiveness have a hard time. I'm just saying have a hard time. Because, listen, forgiving, you know, we try to make it sound easy. Man, it ain't that easy. Yeah. Nah, it ain't easy. But you got to almost become a professional forgiver. <laughs> a professional forgiver. Man, I was on this, um, I was reading the Bible one day, and I ran across this scripture. Because this is another thing I used to, you know, just kind of, not lie about, but I make, up, make it up as I go. Like folk, like, no, because folk would be like, hey, what's your favorite scripture? And I really never had one. But because I knew a bunch of them, I would just throw, throw them out, however I feel, you know. I get it, hey, Moses, what's your favorite scripture? Oh, great is he that is within me. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, that's a good one, dog. <laughs> Mark, what's your favorite scripture? Jesus will. <laughs> I like that, I like that. <laughs> but now I have a favorite scripture. I'm reading the Bible. I don't know what book it's in. Google it. <laughs> but it says, watch this here, that God is married to the backslider. Messed me up. <laughs> Listen, God is married to the backslider. The reason why it messed me up was because I really looked at the phrase and wondered why did he use marriage with his relationship with us? I mean, why didn't it say God is play cousin to the backslide? <laughs> why didn't it say God is co-worker to the backslide? 
But it's a God is married, which means he hooks up with us knowing he got to forgive forever. It's crazy. And I think he used marriages because he like, hey, I want to show you what it's like. Yeah. So when you be like, we ain't equally yo, he probably be like, see what I'm talking about? <laughs> she always lying. You like, I know. <laughs> I know, I feel you. Here it is. Y'all, at my daddy church growing up, we had this organist. Um, we had this organist. He was, he was, he was the organist and the director because my dad only had one check. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, a lot of people get checks now. No, no, no. He had the He had to do that. <laughs> he got worked. <laughs> However, the organist at my daddy's church also lived an alternative lifestyle. Stay with me. Lived an alternative lifestyle. Back at the old church, back in the day, they would try to deliver you out of that alternative lifestyle. So they would pray for him. All in. They were trying to get him to no avail. Finally, after a couple of years, he come down the aisle. Off the organ, came down the aisle. I'm delivered. Man, the church acted a donkey. <laughs> they just went in. He gets delivered, and now he started running through the women in the choir. Women was coming up to my daddy. Pastor, do something. He out of control. And that's why I love my daddy. My dad was like, oh, one miracle at a time. <laughs> oh, he got some catching up to do. <laughs> we ain't going to bother God. Finally, it calmed down. He got serious about one of them. And he asked this one to marry him. And she said, yes. Other women went up to her. You sure? Which I get. She just, they just wanted to make sure. She was coming into this relationship with her eyes. <laughs> Ten years, they were married. Three beautiful kids. Year 11, he backslide <laughs> in the alternative life. Man, when I tell y'all, folk were mad. And I was thinking, should they be mad? Yeah. When I tell y'all, folk was disappointed. And I was thinking, should they be disappointed? Yeah. Man, folk was shocked. <laughs> mm. 
Now, should they be shocked? <laughs> and I'm just so happy that I am in a relationship with a God who is not shocked by my backslide, my electric slide, my cha-cha slide, my wobble, because he said never will he leave me or forsake me because I've been forgiven. My name is Marcus D. Wiley. Thank y'all for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. Dr. Dre, New Faith, thank y'all. Apostle, Lady Parent, my people. Thank y'all, man. Appreciate y'all.